Hello again, Struck Club. Today I would like to hopefully help you decide which relic, which subclass to choose alongside your class. The first thing you need to know is what type of a build do you want to do. Do you want to do a direct damage build? Do you want to do a proc monster build where um, the damage comes from you making a lot of hits per second which results in a lot of procs per second and those procs are the source of damage? Do you want a minion uh, master summoner build? Do you want um, a more survivability and healing? Um, so those are the things you need to answer yourself uh, as well as whether you want the crowd control. Um, so let's go um, from the builds that I like playing the most, proc monster builds, and tell you the three relics I would suggest checking out for proc monster builds. Relic number one for proc monster builds would be the electrode. The main reason would be lightning strike and uh, shocking display um, alongside tingling sensation can be great. You can pair those uh, with uh, chaotic strikes um, for direct damage and make it a hybrid between a direct damage and a proc monster build. You can pair it with vocalized storm uh, and you can pair it with things like rapid strike, cyclone mode, um, uh, shotgun blast, uh, rapid fire um, and then if you're playing a sharpshooter uh, any of the precision skills maybe except, um, except heartseeker and um, and an upgraded uh, scatter shot. Uh, so things that do a lot of hits per second are what you want. Uh, on the Realm Master it goes very well with train builds, even though it's not the obvious synergy. Uh, on Dusk Mage it goes uh, very well because it gives you a uh, casting speed with 1000 volt burst and uh, with Conjure Electrode you can get, if you max it out, another 25% uh, casting speed. Um, with basic attacks uh, this relic can give you as well more things that can proc more stuff such as those uh, zaps, which are definitely not to be underestimated. So it can be good for any class. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, making electrode builds on any class. Uh, and proc monster uh, is um, the name of the game when we talk uh, electrode. You can have a very good direct damage build with chaotic strikes. And I strongly recommend leveling up electrode with the chaotic strike. Now another version of proc monster build would be a build with firestorm magma burst and maybe ignition source uh, if you're lacking uh, if you're lacking um, chance to burn um, again this is also another great one that could do nicely with basic attacks but uh, in uh, in proc monster builds like those you're probably going to be using blazing pillar you're probably going to be using cloak of flames and in in any case regardless what build you use i always suggest using uh, um, the big relic skill in this case summoning smash this again, uh, like the other um, uh, relic, uh, would be perfect with a lot of spells and uh, and skills that do a lot of hits per second. It could be basic attacks uh, that uh, have been maxed out to 60%, which is the cap of attack speed. It could be other things um, like um, rapid fire, rapid strike, cyclone mode. Um, and shotgun bust and so on it could be uh, again it doesn't have to be forged don't mind that i selected forged i just want to have all the skills uh, where i can easily switch between them the third relic that uh, is not as good for proc monster builds but it's still decent would be um, a rupture based build uh, on the blood drinker you're not gonna get as much damage but you can combine blood letter to have bleeding if you don't have it in gear and rupture and um, you can combine this with things like spinning blade uh, if you want a little bit of direct damage and you can combine it with boot seekers if you want healing and extra bonus damage buff and uh, living barrier is definitely something i like i just wish they would uh, allow us to convert the knockback to, to pulling or just disable the knockback when playing melee heroes drain is amazing it goes well with that and so is dance of death um, again the same rules apply Maximize the hits per second to maximize the, proc maximize the procs per second. Now next, let's talk about direct damage builds. Every relic has direct damage builds. Uh, some relics are not uh, that great. I think the best uh, relic for direct damage builds probably would be Flaming Destroyer. You can have things like Blazing Pure, Sword Smash, uh, Summoning Smash. Those are amazing uh, for damage um, directly uh, on, the, uh, on demand. Uh, without relying on procs. Um, then Electrode's uh, Chaotic Strikes is super easy as, uh, as I kept saying in my streams 
level up with chaotic strikes even if you don't want to use it in the end uh, and uh, respect it um, use it in the wall levels and mid levels uh, while you're doing the story uh, and then maybe stack out of it good for direct damage builds now boot drinkers spinning blade is nice for direct damage the drain is amazing for direct damage on demand um, they are not as good damage as flaming destroy or electrode but uh, you get extra survivability and healing so it's still good for direct damage builds now with the bane um, it's a little bit underwhelming uh, the damage you can do from a maxed out venomous mole and spamming venomous mole um, but it is something to consider uh, spectral spider also can be interesting because it does uh, that extra extra uh, poisonous spider act tier 1 bonus that uh, that's actually four of those four of those four explosions each of those do weapon damage uh, equal to the one that the skill does based on its level and uh, i think it's not bad and this tier 2 bonus is actually indirect but still decent damage so this is what you might get as a proc monster build with the bane but uh, again it just spread of that so i didn't talk about this uh, in the proc monster side of things so for direct damage on the Bane, you don't have that much other than Venomous Mo and this thing and uh, Arachnid Assault. So I probably would stay away from it uh, unless I want a minion build. But the Poison build is not something to, to discount, because Poison Nova can also do some damage but not much. And it has to be tier 3 uh, to pierce, uh, which is not bad. I mean, piercing Poison or projectiles are good. Uh, Cold Heart is right now a very underpowered relic, uh, basically because of those two skills and how they work. Uh, and this one also seems very underwhelming, the Ice Golem. Uh, so far I keep returning to the, the relic to test it and uh, I've not seen um, much use of Ice Golem uh, other than maybe using it to tank, but it doesn't have a taunt like Shasta, I wish it did would have been perfect for uh, heroes that don't have talent like the Disc Mage on summoner builds. Frost Blast is very underwhelming um, now that they nerfed it, uh, now that they reduced its distance uh, and it seems like it's damage compared to things like um, Sword Smash or Chaotic Strikes it just doesn't compare, it doesn't compare and Chilling is very underwhelming, Freezing is very nice uh, and once they fix snowstorms, you critically hit frozen enemies while snowstorm is active to really do 100% crit hit. You might want to consider it. Ice shield though is amazing. So, to those of you who really really want to use cold heart, ice shield is the way to go. Max it out, keep your pet next to you, make sure the pet doesn't die. Uh, and when you and the pet are next to a boss, you can um, DPS it, burst it with ice shield and cold front it and snowstorm. It's good for for direct damage builds, but it's not great. Now, the other type of builds I would like to talk about is survivability builds. And as, as I mentioned, um, Bloodwinker is great, but so is Bane. Bane has Poison Nova, which gives you 50% increased total defense for 6 seconds. And so does Miasma. Miasma gives you 50% increased defense. Uh, for as long as the skill is active, which drains your uh, energy until it's uh, depleted. And if you combine this 50% with this 50%, with this 50% and with uh, Vent Vortex Bomb, which doubles your... It says armor, but it doubles your defense. Uh, they need to reward this to make it a little bit uh, better. And uh, the tier 1 bonus makes it last for 4 seconds after using Vortex Bomb, not for... Um, for uh, wow, it's uh, being used only. So you get this for six seconds, this for four seconds, this for eight seconds, and this for as long as it lasts. Keep in mind there is diminishing returns with defense. So the more of those buffs you stack together, the lesser uh, the percentages will go up. They will still go up, but you're not gonna see um, this 50% uh, and this 50% giving you uh, equal gain you're gonna see less of a gain the more defense you stack. Um, that's why I personally prefer Blood Drinker for survivability, because it gives you damage reduction. And you can stack that damage reduction with the Fighter Spirit, uh, and you can stack it with um, the Skittering Shoulders, which soon will be converted into 
um, into a skill that doesn't activate off of um, the big relic skill like Dance of Death, but it would activate um, on your skill bar. You would put Skittering Shoulders on your skill bar and on demand use it for 15 or 30 seconds whether you have the set or not. So I think this damage reduction is uh, more useful because uh, you can still combine it with this defense and with this double armor, double defense. Um, and you combine it with the fighter spirit. Uh, and you can max out at 90% damage reduction. And on my video yesterday I did uh, uh, talk a lot about caps, but I forgot to talk about attack speed being capped at 60%. Um, but yeah, the damage reduction cap you can easily reach uh, with that. So um, another thing for survivability to keep in mind once uh, they maybe rework Froskin to be a little bit uh, uh, faster to, to recharge, because it goes to, f to 35 seconds. Level fast frost skin is one damage, um, one incoming damage uh, source prevented um, every 35 seconds. Ice shield gives you every 20 seconds, or if you have items that reduce its cooldown, it can go up to every 18 something seconds. Next three sources of damage. So if you combine that and this one, uh, and uh, when they maybe reduce the cooldown of frost skin. Um, it can be nice, but it's still not as good uh, survivability as Budrinker and Bane right now. So that's it for survivability builds. And next uh, we are going for uh, minion builds. Minion builds, um, some people would think that uh, the golems, um, the golem is, uh, and this relic is good for minion builds. I tried minion builds with this relic and there's something that you might want to consider when they fix snowstorm for you critically hit frozen enemies while snowstorm is active and you combine a lot of minions that means your minions would be critting a lot it's gonna be not as good as a bane build or an electrode build or even a flaming destroyer summoner build out of the box uh, but with bane you have minions here you have one minion and another six more when upgraded here you also have this one which can keep summoning minions as you use it as well. Um, this one keeps summoning minions, uh, I think it summons like 6 minions. Uh, so if this lasts for 6 seconds you're gonna get 6 spiderlings. And this is one big minion um, with tier 1 bonus uh, and a lot of damage. So the obvious choice for minion damage would be this because you have 100% minion damage here while Miasma is active. And you have another 25% minion damage here. And this stacks with the extra 25% damage to nearby allies. So that's 125 from Miasma and 25 from Puppet Master damage to all your minions. And keep in mind, minions is everything that is not you or your pets. So it could be Explode Bots, it could be Netherlings, it could be Goblins, it could be Shasta, it could be the trains of the Realm Master. Uh, it could be um, the ancestral spirits of the realm master. It could be the spirits from the musketeer gauntlets. Uh, it could be anything that uh, that fights for you, uh, but is not your pet. So another option, as I said, is electrode. Electrode proc monster builds with lightning strike, where you're using the minions to trigger procs. And the same uh, strategy applies using the minions to trigger firestorm and magma burst on this relic. You can do it. Uh, it's doable. And the same could apply with Rupture as well. Um, but uh, I think with with the Blood Drinker, if you go for a minion build, you're not going to rely that much on damage. You're going to be kind of like triggering a little bit of extra Rupture maybe every now and then, but focusing more on surviving. But it's not going to be that bad. It's not going to be um, that bad uh, to try a minion build with the Blood Drinker. But the Blood Drinker is probably the last relic I would do a minion build on. Um, but I actually want to do one very soon, just uh, for the sake of testing it because it's out of the box build. So I think that's pretty much some of the, the important things uh, we needed to talk about. So hope it was useful information. Um, thanks for watching the video. You can subscribe to my channel uh, and click that bell button to not miss out when I upload content. And optionally, if you want to, you can even join the Stroke Club on YouTube. Um, uh, as a member uh, and get perks such as emotes uh, and loyalty badges and other optional uh, perks. So thanks again for watching the video, um, keep it cool until next time and goodbye from me.